is the past fixed? You know, most people would claim that they don't believe in sense perception. And by that, they simply mean that they don't believe everything they see or some other such thing. But the real question of whether you believe in sense perception is whether your experience of the universe around you is that of a human being or that of an animal. The extent to which you believe that time is composed of moments is exactly the extent to which you do believe in sense perception. The idea that there is such a thing as a completely defined moment in and of itself from which all future moments flow, sort of like dominoes, actually stems from the work of Isaac Newton and Laplace. In Newton's universe, everything is composed of the motions of little hard balls, they have positions, they have velocities, and they have forces which act on them. And if you know their positions, their velocities, and the forces which act on them at one moment in Newton's absolute time, then you know the forces, velocities, and the positions that constitute the next moment. In fact, every single moment which is to follow is contained in every moment which precedes it. Thus, the causality moves forward like dominoes. This is true for one ball with a velocity. It's true for two balls with a velocity, three, four, five. Laplace extends this to make the entire universe mechanical. His moment contains the positions, velocities, and forces acting on all of these little hard balls which compose the entire universe. And thus, if you were a being, Laplace's demon, which could know those positions and velocities of every element in the universe at any given moment, you would be able to successfully predict the positions and arrangements at every single moment which was to follow. This is a universe which is strictly deterministic and leaves no room for human free will, no room for human creativity. But the sane person realizes that human creativity actually does exist in the universe. If so, the question is, how does it exist in the universe? Obviously, the space and time of Newton and Laplace are incompatible with the notion of real human creativity. But what sort of space and time is compatible with human creativity? Now, in fact, there are some very serious questions which have arisen in science which demand this sort of investigation to be able to tackle them. Most recently, was the train wreck which occurred at the beginning of the 20th century with the development of so-called quantum mechanics. At that point, there was a move made by a number of lunatics in the guise of scientists to try and scrap the concept of causality altogether. Because what they said was that if they could not have their simple one-to-one -one domino causality, then nobody could have any causality. <clears throat> when presented with this argument near the end of his life, Einstein made the provocative point that, in fact, we have to eliminate the concept of domino causality because that's a kind of causality that looks like a beginner plunking out note after note on the piano with no sense of how they form a coherent whole and partially believing that each note is creating the note that follows. Whereas instead, what we're seeing in the quantum phenomena and all these phenomena in the very, very small is a type of causality that begins to look a lot more like the causality that we would see in a Bach fugue. When listening to a series of notes, for example, it's not the case that each note exists in a vacuum in and of itself. In fact, it's very hard to hear a sequence of notes and not connect them such that the note which follows has an effect on the note which precedes, changing its meaning by an action which operates seemingly backwards in time.
If we were to try and draw this out on a timeline, this would mean that a state A, which ostensibly generates a state B, is then changed by the mere existence of that state B. At the same time, state B descending from state A generating a state C is changing the preceding states B and A. This is to say nothing else than the fact that the note, if viewed as a moment in a musical space, is not the perfectly defined thing that Laplace states a moment in time actually is. Now, your inclination is to say, well, the past doesn't change. Your idea of the past changes. But the question immediately arises is to what extent are you capable of really making that distinction? Is it true that the universe divides itself into something called fact and something else called idea? To begin with, we'll take a question looking at this exact same composition here. And we'll extend that to make an ontological point about the universe as a whole. <laughs> 